Welcome to Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. I'd like to welcome all the candidates. Um, I'd like to welcome the citizens that came uh, tonight. Uh, Mary Jane Bacon, who is going to be our moderator this evening. And um, Hadley Mothers Club members that um, are in the back of the room um, with the, all the treats and refreshments tonight. And also in the back of the room is um, Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation. They have a table set up uh, with information. The Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation seeks to enrich the educational experiences of the students in the Hadley Public Schools. If you'd like any more information, they're in the back of the room and uh, they'll give you a brochure here and have you look at that. And um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the Hadley Mothers Club has been sponsoring uh, Candidates Night in organizing this night for over 35 years. Um, we, um, they, they felt that long ago that they, they needed a forum for candidates to come introduce themselves and tell a little bit about why they're running for the offices for the town. So this um, gives them the opportunity, also the citizens to listen to them and um, get to know a little bit about them. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mary Jane Bacon, our moderator for the evening. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Hadley Candidates Night, which is, as you know, sponsored by the Hadley Mothers Club. I'm going to go over the rules for tonight. Each candidate will have five minutes for an opening statement. Candidates may ask fellow candidates one question that is based on the issues only. Question candidates will be given two minutes for a rebuttal. At the conclusion of the candidate's statements, there will be a short break so that w written questions for the candidates may be accepted from members of the audience. There are cards available on the tables for this purpose. All questions must be signed. Questions that do not deal with issues or that might damage a candidate's character will be disqualified. Questions may be combined for convenience. So now we're going to start to hear from the candidates. There are two selectman positions, and each is for three years. Speaking first tonight will be Guilford Mooring, the second. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to just say I'm Guilford, and I'm running for re-election, uh, and then I'm going to just... Uh, leave the rest of my time for questions at the end because you probably want to ask me more questions than you want to hear about me except uh, I'm re I am running for re-election so thank you. Speaking next is John Wiskevich. Uh, I'd like to thank the Mothers Club for having this forum for the next selectman and library and what, uh, treasurer um, for having this little organization for how, 35 years now, she said. It's quite a long time in Hadley. And, uh, I'd like to thank the citizens and the taxpayers for my first three years, which went by quite quickly. Um, and there's just a couple concerns I have over the last three years is our budget. Our budget has went from $250,000 deficit to over 711 now. And I hope in the next three years that we can get together and somehow balance this budget and, and move ahead without raising the taxes too much for the citizens and the taxpayers in this community. So... <clears throat> We have made a little bit of progress in the last three years with our building and maintenance, and we're moving forward eventually here with a building, hopefully to be rebuilt or build a new one. We haven't decided yet which direction we're going in, but uh, I'd appreciate your vote on April 12th, and uh, hopefully I can serve you again for the next three years. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Donald J. Pipchinski. Good evening. 
I'm Donald Pipsinski, and I am running for one of the seats on the Hadley Select Board on April 12th. Fellow candidates, moderator, concerned citizens and voters of Hadley, Hadley Mothers Club. I did a little research myself before I came here this evening and the Mothers Club started in 1944 and the last time I spoke at the candidates night was actually 1992. But my first time speaking here and I can attest to the year was 1978 which is uh, a little bit longer, and actually, Candidates Night started in 63-64 under the direction and the presidency of Barbara Konetsny. I don't know if some, if some of you people remember her or not, but uh, she was a great president. Uh, I'm gonna change a little bit. You're gonna probably ask, what am I doing opening a newspaper? You know, uh, and actually what I'm doing is referring back and looking at my classmates. In here is all the pictures of my classmates and all of the classes from the area schools. This was an insert in the Daily Hampshire Gazette years ago. Every year they did this with Mitchell Cody and your graduation pictures. The first time I spoke was in 1967 when I was a senior at Hopkins Academy on this stage. I went uh, to a senior meeting for a class play. I was sort of labeled as a jock. I played three sports and so I went to the meeting. I was going to donate and say I'm going to do the lighting and uh, scenery and something like that. I walked through the door. All of a sudden a book comes flying at me and if you knew Mr. Olivier, he was the head of the English department and vice principal in charge of discipline. So you never said no to Mr. Olivier, no matter what. So I got acclimated and my first speaking term was up here and with the play Portrait of Jenny. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it was on the Cape about a guy losing his girlfriend. And it was uh, really, I thought it was pretty special because I was a cab driver and they actually let me walk around on the stage puffing on a cigar in school. So it was part of the act, but uh, it was a little special. I remember that a lot. Concerned citizens of Hadley. With today's fast paced society, it isn't very often you can give something back to your community to make it a better place to live, work, and play. I feel the best way to serve the townspeople of Hadley is in local government. Over the last 40 years of involvement, I've learned a great deal along the way. With the respect and confidence of my colleagues, I was once elected president of Hampshire County Selectmen's Association and a member of the Massachusetts Selectmen's Executive Board. During the last five years, the economy has been very robust for the 351 communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, not just in Hadley. My four years on the Finance Committee and six years as a selectman have given me the tools to deal with an up and coming recession. The school department indicated in their fiscal 2017 budget a possible two and a half override is going to be needed. I have made tough fiscal decisions in the past and I'm ready to deal with them in the future. My philosophy on issues has been set over the years. I would be labeled as a fiscal conservative, but that doesn't mean I'm not willing to spend a dollar if I can envision getting two or three back on my investment. Yes, I care about quality education. That's why I will continue to be a strong advocate for the precious resource, our children and their education. Yes, I care about aquifer protection and environment. That's why I served on the Water Task Force 2000. Yes, I care about agricultural preservation and conservation. That's why I work so vigorously to set up the APR program, which now has 2,690 acres protected forever. Nothing will be built on them. 
that figure is just a little under half. I care about financial stability of Hadley taxpayers. That's why I will continue to work to attract new revenues so our tax rate remains diverse. That allows people on fixed incomes as well as young families to remain living in harmony in Hadley. Yes, I also care about transportation and infrastructure issues. That's why I helped create the Route 9 corridor of critical concern, which allowed us to put three lanes on the Coolidge Bridge with a cantilevering sidewalk and extend four lanes all the way to West Street. What I would like to do in the future is start a dialogue to try to eliminate the problem on Damon Road and possibly extend four lanes all the way to the University of Amherst. Some of my experience, I've been uh, six years on the Hadley Board of Selectmen, Chairman Two. During that time, we only had three members, not five like we do today. I served three, uh, four years on the Hadley Finance Committee, Massachusetts uh, Select Boards Association Executive Board, Hampshire County Selectmen's Association President, Massachusetts Municipal, Okay. Uh, in closing, I would just like to say uh, I care a lot about Hadley. I'm going to end it with a, like a little rhyme. Uh, my neighbor Ross Fryer told me something 30 years ago, and I never forgot it. He said, the city of Northampton has just applied for a line to heaven, and they got accepted. So Amherst followed it right up. And they got accepted. So the select board says, oh, we're going to apply. Two weeks later, come back in big red letters, rejected. And underneath it said, reason why, you're already living in heaven. The next position is for an elector under the Oliver Smith will the one-year position. And we're now gonna hear from Sheila Kuzneski. Sorry. Thank you to the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting this event tonight. My name is Sheila Knezny and I am a candidate for the elector under the Oliver Smith will. I am a lifelong resident of Hadley and live on Shattuck Road with my husband Steve. We have two grown children, Jeffrey and Emma. I am a graduate of UMass Amherst and have worked there for over 30 years. Currently I am the Associate Director of Financial Aid. Each year, as part of this role, I host several financial aid nights in local high schools including Hopkins Academy, to help families complete the financial aid application process. I would like to share with you some information about the elector for the Oliver Smith will. Oliver Smith was a successful farmer from Hatfield who died in 1845, leaving the most extraordinary will ever filed in Massachusetts. Smith Charities was established in 1848 by the will of Oliver Smith. In 1847, the heirs of Oliver Smith hired Rufus Choate to contest the will at a Supreme Court trial held in Northampton. The trustees of Smith Charities hired Daniel Webster, who successfully defended the provisions of the will. The provisions of the will, which have been amended, established a $400,000 trust, which has paid out to date over $9 million to qualified recipients from nine communities. Further provisions of the will included establishing Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. The will provides gifts to widows with children under the age of 18, brides, tradespersons, and nurses. My major duty as the elector is to represent the townspeople of Hadley on the board of electors of the trustees of Miss Charities and to refer to the board 
trust to the, and refer, to refer to the board those who may be eligible to receive the benefits provided by the will of Oliver Smith. Other electors are selected by voters in the communities of Deerfield, East Hampton, Amherst, Greenfield, Hatfield, Northampton, Whateley, and Williamsburg. Thank you for your consideration in the election on April 12th, and please contact me if you or someone that you know in Hadley may be eligible for the benefits of the Oliver Smith will. Thank you. The next position is library trustee for three years. There are two of these positions. And tonight we're gonna to hear from Karen Purley. Hi, my name is Karen Purley, and I've had the pleasure of being a library trustee for the past nine years. And I wanna thank the Hadley Mothers Club for giving me an opportunity to speak tonight. Folks around town, and my friends, and even my family have asked me why I am running for another three-year term. And I simply say, this is the most exciting time to be a library trustee in Hadley. I've been fortunate to work with a library board and a director that listens to the community and works together to provide the best possible library services and programs for the Hadley community. In fact, we responded to the 2013 survey by increasing open hours from 25 to 33, including more evening hours, Saturday hours, and we're now open four days a week for teens to come over directly after school to do homework, to do research or join in the teen activities led by Katie. We have offered more in a variety of programs for children, teens, and adults through the year that are all well attended. We have bought new computers. We have made some improvements to make the library more comfortable. By listening to the community and taking action, we have constantly increased the circulation of books, DVDs, and audiobooks. There's been an increase of computer usage and program attendance. And in February 2015, we had 1,200 patrons visit compared to this year, 1,660. The Goodwill Memorial Library has become a community living room for all ages to enjoy. A community living room is a public library that is open and free to all residents not only a place to read and sit quietly, like it was when I grew up as a kid, it is a place to meet others, to build with Legos, to learn to play the ukulele, um, to apply for a job online, learn about your genealogy, to share your thoughts about a book at a book club, or write with a creative writing group, or order a bestseller or a very obscure book and receive it in a few days. This community living room is ever evolving. And as part of the planning and design grant process, the trustees and I continue to listen and respond to the community survey and results and the data to plan for our future. The trustees have heard what residents want. They want a dedicated children's space, a teen space, a quiet space, a meeting space, a computer space, more parking spaces, and most importantly, accessibility for all to come to the library and to be in the center of the town. So it's been determined by the Planning and Design Committee, Municipal Building Committee, and the current library building cannot provide all the space we need for the next 20 years. And as a trustee, I have helped oversee some small improvements, projects um, to make the 114-year-old building in fairly good condition and make the inadequate space more comfortable. And with each project, it brings excitement. And most recently, replacing the flooring in the basement to have a clean, fresh space for the teens and story time and the ever so popular Luna Tunes with parents and babies. They crowd in about 20 each week. Volunteers have worked with the trustees and have pride into our library. And in 2009, as a trustee, I helped oversee the ramp project that allowed people to come into the library that previously couldn't because of the stairs. 
However, with the new proposed library, the whole building will be accessible. Families with strollers, adults and children using wheelchairs or walkers can use the entire building. With the new proposed space, there can be more programs at the same time for all different age groups and events, and this would be amazing. A few weeks ago, I went um, with my mom to, she lives in Salisbury, Mass, she's 84. She wanted to show me her new library. It was supported by a Massachusetts Board of Library construction grant. They tore down the old library and built a remarkable new building with everything you possibly could want in it. She showed me every space of the building with pride. She showed me the big program room where she goes for her Civil War lecture series, where her book club meets, and most recently where the Irish step dancing performance was. She has difficulty getting around. She lives alone, she's on fixed income, but she's thrilled to go to the library, to sit in a comfortable chair and look out on her common to read her favorite magazine or local paper in her community living room. This community living room is air conditioned in the summer and has a fireplace cozy for the winter. I sat there with her thinking, we could have this. Sunderland, Granby, I go to their libraries and say Hadley deserves this. Oh yeah, there's another reason why I'm running. My parents brought me up, and I hope this for my kids too, to give back to your community and to make a difference. And I hope you will join me in participating in making a difference on election day, April 12th, or participating at the annual town meeting on May 5th, and advocate for the things that are important to you and your family and for Hadley. I'd appreciate your vote, and I promise to keep listening. Thank you. The next position is library trustee one year. We're gonna hear from Alan Weinberg. Good evening. My name is Alan Weinberg. I live at 108 Bay Road. I have served as a library trustee for the past year when I was appointed by the select board to fill a vacancy on the board until this election. I've lived in Hadley for more than 40 years. My wife and I, my children and my grandchildren have all used and enjoyed the services and programs of the, of the Goodwin Library. It's been an honor and a pleasure for me to work with the other Goodwin Library trustees and the library staff to maintain and support the library and to move the library forward into the future. I would very much like to continue to serve as a trustee and I'd appreciate your vote. Libraries have, uh, offer many services and programs which enrich the lives of residents of all ages. Libraries are an indoor town common and a meeting place to socialize and learn with neighbors. They are a judgment and pressure free zone for children and teens to explore their world, expand their horizons, open up new worlds of discovery, learning, and fun. And I know from personal experience, one of the best ways for parents to give children the love of reading and knowledge, other than reading to them at bedtime, is to bring them to the library. Visits to and use of the Goodman Library have increased significantly over the past several years, and they continue to increase. The town has been very generous in providing budget support for library staff, programs, and building maintenance. The trustees have worked very hard to use available funds in a frugal and fiscally responsible manner. We receive significant state funding assistance for our operations and generous do donations and gifts from library patrons and friends. <clears throat> the current library has a dedicated and fantastic staff who strive to provide great programs and activities for adults, teens, and children of all ages. But the sad fact is that the limitations of the current building severely hinders and restricts these efforts. Our current library building has charm and history, but it's extremely inadequate. There's not enough space, basically, is the biggest problem. Programs and activities are crammed on top of each other. It's impossible to offer quiet use when you have kids next to reading areas, next to compu computer areas. The bathrooms are not accessible. There's no dedicated children's room. There's no adequate space for teens. The teen and story, uh, the children's story time programs have to be held in the basement which is accessed by a narrow and dangerous staircase. 
For these and other reasons, the trustees have been working hard to provide a library of the future for the town of Hadley, and have proposed and have asked for the town's support to apply for a state grant for construction of a new library. The trustees have worked hard to include and update the town residents, committees, and groups about this process. There is a ton of information about the proposed library available on the library's website and in the library, and there have been and will be public information sessions in advance of the upcoming town meeting. I hope that residents will take advantage of these opportunities to learn more about what is happening with the library and will support the efforts of, to provide a library that the town deserves. Thank you, and again, I would appreciate your vote for me to continue on the Board of Trustees. And now we'll hear from the candidates for treasurer, the three-year position. Speaking first is Linda J. Sanderson. Thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Moderator. Thanks also to the Hadley Mothers Club for sponsoring this event. To my fellow candidates who came out tonight, to the Hadley voters, whether joining us live or watching us from home, to my husband, Bill Dwyer, who's here tonight, and to the rest of my family who will catch it later on YouTube. <laughs> I am Linda Sanderson, the incumbent town treasurer. Last year, you elected me to finish out the final year in Connie Michikowski's term following her retirement. I'm here tonight to ask that you re-elect me for a full three-year term. I've lived in Hadley for 35 years, having moved here soon after marrying in 1981. Bill and I both had both recently graduated from Boston College Law School and returned to Hadley to join Bill's father's law practice. We were delighted to be able to raise our children just steps away from their grandparents. In 1996, we opened our law firm in Hadley as Dwyer and Sanderson, and in time we moved into the family home. All three of our children attended Hadley schools and graduated from Hopkins Academy. Bill and I have been involved with the town and community all the time we've lived here. I was on Hadley's first Early Childhood Advisory Council. I was a Girl Scout leader for 12 years and a member of Hopkins Academy School Council for 10 years. I volunteered with the Hopkins Band, Mock Trial Team, and the Drama Club. Most relevant to my current position, I was appointed to four terms on the Hadley Finance Committee. When the opportunity came up last year to run for the open position of town treasurer, I knew it would be a great match all around. To me, it was the culmination of many years' experience in municipal budgeting and finance, on the one hand, and decades of legal experience um, with fiduciary accounting and charitable t and tax reporting, contracts, and long-term financial planning on the other. Even the business side of the law practice has been valuable as I've been able to bring many of my office management and computer accounting skills to the new job. While treasurer is generally a low profile position, it plays a key role in protecting the town's financial well-being. Hadley has a total of 10 to 12 million dollars in its accounts at any given time. The treasurer holds sole responsibility for the oversight, management, and reporting on these funds. Hadley takes in an average of nearly $2 million every month in receipts. Whatever the source, every single penny is received by, tracked, and accounted for by the treasurer's office. That same $2 million, $2 million amount on average is processed in outgoing payments each month. Every single payment from the town is funded by and paid directly out of the treasurer's office. There are two people in our office, the treasurer and an incredi our incredibly valuable assistant treasurer, Joan Zuzko. Joan has served in the position for over 17 years. Connie Michikowski served as treasurer for over 25 years before me. The experience and dedication of the treasurer's office over those years enabled it to take on ever-growing responsibilities, often shared with other departments in comparable towns. And in larger towns, they are handled by a human resources department, accounting and or payroll departments, and a finance director. In Hadley, it's the treasurer's office handles all payroll and related employment issues. We handle the annual reviews and processing of employee benefits. We administer all workers' comp and unemployment claims and administrative hearings. We handle all borrowings, bonds, and debt management. We file the annual cash report and debt schedule statements with the state. We handled the auditor's week-long visit last month and we gathered the updated information for our annual continuing disclosure report filed with the SEC last week. 
Then there's the long-term financial planning, which is the area which I particularly enjoy being able to apply my planning background. Good planning saves the town money and makes the best use of your tax dollars. It is our past solid financial planning practices that helped earn Hadley its AA plus bond rating from Standard & Poor's, allowing us to borrow at better interest rates. We need to keep that rating. Long-term planning will be even more important as the town makes some critical decisions on its municipal buildings over the next few years. I'm grateful for my involvement with Hadley over the years and I'm honored to have been part of its financial team for so long. Joan and I have the treasurer's office running beautifully right now. We have all the bases covered with some old projects recently completed and some new projects just underway. I would love to be able to continue with the work we've begun. Please vote on Tuesday, April 12th and re-elect Linda Sanderson as Hadley's town treasurer. Thank you. And now we'll hear from the other um, candidate for the treasurer's position, Kristen Parmenter. Good evening. Thank you to the Mother's Club for sponsoring tonight's candidate event. My name is Kristen Parmenter and I am running for town treasurer. I've lived in Hadley for the past seven years, but have been a resident of the Pioneer Valley for the last 25. I spent most of my childhood in Amherst before moving to Florence in my teens. My fiance, Justin Yazerski, is a lifelong Hadley resident and we have one son who's a first grader at the elementary school. I am currently the assistant treasurer for the city of Northampton, where I work directly alongside the treasurer in all aspects of the city's finances. I have extensive experience reconciling monthly bank statements, as well as processing and printing payroll and accounts payable warrants. I am familiar with the importance of meeting all state and federal deadlines in regards to payroll, sales and meals taxes, and wage reporting. Prior to becoming the assistant treasurer, I was the payroll and accounts payable coordinator, also for the city of Northampton. In this position, my job was to input and process the city's bi-weekly payroll of 1,500 plus employees, as well as proof and process weekly accounts payable warrants before their transfer to the treasurer's office for final proofing and printing. I have extensive cash handling and cash control experience from five years of banking with Florence Savings Bank, where I was a senior teller and the teller trainer. I have a degree in liberal arts from Greenfield Community College and am currently pursuing my bachelor's in finance with a focus in accounting at the Eisenberg School of Management at UMass Amherst. If elected as part of my fiduciary responsibility to the town of Hadley, I will look at the structure of the current bank accounts to make sure that they fit the community's needs in respect to safety, liquidity, and yield. I will also look at ways to improve the, the interest revenue for the town. I also have extensive experience working with tax titles, including land of low value. I would love to implement a proactive plan to work with residents to resolve their tax title matters. I understand the importance of working together with other departments and will work hard to build relationships among these departments to create a respectful working environment with excellent lines of communication. From my experience working with the city of Northampton, I have found that teamwork is the key to success. This will create a positive environment for both employees and the public. Working in the treasurer's office has enabled me to meet many new people. I already have great working relationships with numerous local banks, as well as tax title attorneys and financial managers. I am currently a member of the Massachusetts Collector Treasurer Association, where I've completed two years of their annual treasurer school. Like all of you here this evening, I've worked very hard to get where I am today. I would love the opportunity to be able to utilize my hard work ethic and dedication in this wonderful community where I'm raising my family. Please vote Kristen Parmenter for treasurer on April 12th. Thank you and have a nice evening. We have now reached the end of the candidate statement and we'll take a break to collect questions from the audience. So we're now at the question portion of the program and I will read the questions and the candidates will have three minutes to respond. There are two questions for the selectman candidates and one for the treasurer candidates. 
so. This is the first question for the selectmen. The police and fire departments have asked to expand their services and personnel. Do you support these changes? And if so, how would you pay for them? It's funny, I thought they'd be free. Um, we're gonna go first with Guilford Mooring. Thank you for that question. Um, so, there's actually several departments because we went through a very detailed analysis of strengths, weaknesses, and threats, SWOT analysis. I never remember the words. Um, fire has some needs, and I agree they have needs, and we need to work on those. But the police department at this point probably has the most needs, and they, and in my view, my personal view, not as this select board, as a group, um, the police needs to come first this year. Um, and I'm willing to put any extra money we have in the budget towards resolving the police issue this year, and then studying and working hard to get the fire issue for next year. Um, there's, as you watch, if you watch the select board meetings, you'll know there's not enough money to go around for everyone. And, and we truly have to kind of prioritize which area we believe is the current area of need and the most need, and then move that along and then pick up the next area the next year. Um, we can't pay for it all. If, if we wanted to pay for it all, we'd have to have a, a talk about an override this year. But I do believe in the budget right now, we'll see there's enough money to take care of the police and get them to where they need to be, and then we'll be able to address the fire next year. And then um, the next big one is schools, which is lurking behind that one. Thank you. Speaking next is John Wiskevich. Um, no, not at this time for either. Uh, we're really under a budget restraint right now. And in the past three years, I, I've seen the deficit grow ever so largely. And if we can't balance a $711,000 budget deficit right now, I just can't see us hiring eight firefighters and putting a full-time department in right now and probably adding that to the budget of well over a million dollars a year uh, the way they want to do it with the ambulance service. Speaking next is Donald Pichinski. Everything is evolving so quickly in this town. We have five departments in town that are requesting brand new buildings, buying land. We have a budget that's almost a million dollars out of whack for 217. Presently, we have $2.39 in free cash. They took 504000 last year to balance the budget. They're expecting that to go to 500000 and take it again to balance the budget. After talking to the Department of Revenue and their estimates, the last three months they've been off 18% a month on revenues, and it's going to be reflective in the money that we get back. Also, they're looking at taking $700,000 out of stabilization to balance this budget. To me, that's a sacred cow. My first term in 1982, we started the stabilization. Greg Mish and I were on the Finance Committee. We said we have to start a rainy day account. And what we came up with was cutting off the reservoir for the first time, which yielded $45,000. That's how we started the stabilization, and it's built to 2.3. In my estimation, that is a sacred car, cow for emergencies, and no money should be taken out of that for operating expenses. When you start taking your free cash, stabilization, your enterprise funds reducing them, it affects your S&P bonding. If we go out and deplete all of those areas, when we go to borrow money, it's going to be exorbitantly high for the town of Hadley, and it's going to have an adverse effect on us. Thank you. 
This is the second question for the selectmen candidates. What are the three biggest opportunities for Hadley in the next year? So we're going to hear from first this time John Wysick, uh, excuse me, John Muscovitz. Well, one of the biggest opportunities I hope to see is one of the municipal buildings that we all come together on and vote on and progress forward on and get it built and get it in service for the citizens and taxpayers of this town. We've got over a hundred million dollars worth of buildings that either need to be renovated or replaced and we've got a good list to work off of, but we just need a little bit more direction in, in which way we're going to go. Uh, I had made a couple points on ballot questions to get a, a little bit more than the 50 of you nice people that made it here this evening or the 100 people that we have at town meeting. If we put it on a ballot question and they go and vote for what building that they think they want us to concentrate on first, second, or third would give us a little bit more would give me a little bit more of, uh, of thought into voting for uh, that particular building to concentrate on and build or renovate. Secondly, again, is the budget. We, we really need to take some financial responsibilities in this town and balance our budget. The 25, 24% of our seniors in town right now are in fixed incomes and we really can't afford to double our tax rate at this point to pay our operating budgets. We need to take some financial responsibilities on and, and get it done. And three, I don't know. I'm sure we'll find something in the next couple of years. <laughs> All right, thank you for the question. Speaking next is Donald Pichinski. I guess our biggest thing in front of us is sort of like Mr. Wiskevich said, is our financial situation right now. Uh, I'm very upset with what happened to the finance committee. We had four members resign. When I went to see the town administrator, I said, why did they dis resign. He said all of the terms were up, which was wrong. He didn't. That wasn't true. Uh, then he said, oh, they resigned because they were frustrated. Another untruth. There was 43 years of collective experience with those four individuals there. What we lost, it's hard to even fathom. That is our only safeguard in this town, is our finance committee, to watch our tax dollars. They investigate every department, and then they recommend to town meeting to save us and expend our money in the proper way. The other thing that bothered me a lot is the tri-board. Most people don't even know what the tri-board is. It's a combination of the board of selectmen, school committee, and finance committee. It's recommended by the uh, Department of Revenue to have a tri-board to keep an accurate financial balance of what's happening in your town. The school board's budget consists of 42% by itself now, and having those three boards together to discuss it monthly to know how you're going and what finances you need in this town is really important. If I'm elected, I will try to reinstate that tri-board so we have a better picture. I was told that was disbanded because the school board couldn't meet the schedule. Another fallacy. And now we're going to hear from Guilford Mooring. Could you send a question again? This way, sure. I my actual... It's actually here. Okay, I'll read it. What are the three biggest opportunities for Hadley in the next year? Biggest opportunities. We always like opportunities. Buildings. We are getting ready to go to town meeting and we're going to get ready to vote on possibly doing a library, possibly building a senior center, possibly building a park and rec building. It's all the citizens' choices. 
It's not the last choice. You can vote at this fall, this annual town meeting to do this, and you're not guaranteeing we'll actually do it because we'll have to vote again another time. But the opportunity is there. We as the citizens can take a look and see if we really want to do this. Build these buildings, provide for the future, set the next level as we go forward. Yes, it will cost some money, but we have money and we have debt coming off our, our debt rolls in the next few years, and we need to balance our debt out. We've talked about this several times on the select board, is that we need to, we are in a good position as far as our debt goes, that we can afford it, and we have some coming off. And as that comes off, we need to look at ways to improve ourselves, improve our capital, and provide for the future, and not have tax rates go up and down. So opportunity number one, buildings. We have a choice to make at the annual town meeting. Number two, we do have a good bond rating. We do have a good stabilization account. There's no one asking to take it away, no one planning to take any money out of it. We built ourselves financially into a good position. Can we be in a better position? Yes. Can we be in a worse position? Yes, we could be in a worse one too. But we are in a very good position. So the opportunity is there for us to do a lot more. I can get three. Okay, I only have a few seconds left. One minute, okay. So number three, we have a good group of people in Hadley. People willing to work together and put their differences aside and try to do and um, compromise and make things happen. That's something I've seen since I've li lived here is that people really do want to work together. There's not a lot of infighting. Sometimes there is, but it's not really a lot. But people do want to work together to make things better. And that's an opportunity we need to capitalize on moving forward. As we talk about the first two items, people coming together, pushing hard for Hadley and keeping Hadley a good community and a community people want to live in. Fourth one, I'm going to take John's fourth one. We have the ability to do a lot of things in town to actually help. We have the um, sales tax, local option sales tax. So anytime you're hungry, go eat in town. You want to buy a new car? Go buy a new car. That helps our tax rate. Yeah. I actually know that for a fact now. I wish I hadn't, but it was a very, it's helping the town, so I'm happy for that. But we have a lot of opportunity and we need control of all of our destiny. So reach out and do things and, and move us all, help us move along. And now I'm rambling and I apologize. And now we come to the question for the treasurer candidates. The Department of Revenue recommends combining the treasurer and collector positions and making it into an appointed position. Do you think Hadley should explore this option? Speaking first will be Linda Sanderson. Hmm. Well, there's a loaded question. Um, this recommendation from a Department of Revenue actually goes back to a June 2013 uh, management review that was done by the Department of Lo uh, Local Services for the town of Hadley. There were many, many recommendations that went on for several pages uh, in that. And uh, many recommendations did involve the treasurer's office and almost all of those have been re uh, resolved. Um, the one that we are not able to address in the, you know, the treasurer's office can't address it is because, is this question because it's not up to the treasurer's office. This, there is a committee that's been appointed by the select board. Um, it hasn't really gotten underway. Uh, they've had their priorities as well. It is something that needs to be discussed. Um, it's actually, um, I see that as, uh, it's, it's framed as, as one question, but it's really two. There's two parts of that. One is combining the treasurer and collector. Um, I'm sort of of the, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, I think the, tr the collector's office has been working just fine, and the treasurer's work office is, is working fine. I'm not sure why you'd step in and, and manipulate and actually combine those two positions at the current time. I think if you're going to do something, we ought to, you know, let's discuss it. Uh, let's discuss perhaps, um, uh, you know, something with a financial director, which is, you know, I mentioned that in my speech, which is someone who really has an oversight of all the financial functions in town, which may be a good thing for the town. 
which is something I would put on the table probably before I'd be talking about combining those positions. The second part of that question is whether it should be appointed or elected. Um, that's a, that can go either way. Um, my feeling, oh, at the moment, I think I'd love to be appointed. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, it's been elected a long time. Uh, and when you have candidates for any of these positions, and this applies also to the collector's position, to the town's clerk, and the town clerk's position, I think those are the three that are in that position of, they could be appointed, they're appointed in some, tom, some towns, they're elected in other towns. If you've got a good candidate going out for those positions, you're, you're, that's great, that's great. And, and if you have the choice of two qualified people, that, that's great too. What happens in the year when you don't? Um, have those candidates going out for it. Does that mean that you take um, you take whatever comes before you? I don't. Again, that is something that has to be discussed. If we're going to continue with uh, it being elected, it has to be something where we have to sort of actively recruit and make sure we've got people lined up for it. If you go appointed, you're able to uh, cast a wider net and find people from area towns around who may have the qualifications that you're looking for. Uh, we don't require, I mean, to be elected, you have to be from Hadley. We don't require of that of our, our, of our chiefs of other departments. That's worth discussing. Like I said, there's no one person that, you know, an, an opinion is just an opinion. I think it has to be discussed as a committee um, and uh, all of these things flushed out and, uh, and make a decision that seems, seems the best for Hadley. And that's the best I can do. <laughs> Thanks. Speaking next is Kristen Parmenter. I agree with Linda, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, coming from the city of Northampton, we just combined our treasurer collector offices earlier this year. Um, unfortunately for us, it was a little broken and this um, combining has strengthened the department, um, but there's a very good, there's very good uh, other employees in the building and other supportive employees, so it is working for them. But I think that for Hadley, it would really be dependent on the voters. It would be something that the residents would decide. And it definitely needs to be considered by a committee. Northampton did take a committee. They researched it. They went out to other towns. And um, at the point in time for us, it did work. So it would be up to the voters, um, up to a committee. Um, but if it's working now, I think that the way it is separated is, is fine. That concludes the questions. I want to thank all the candidates for the wonderful job they did tonight and the audience for their participation. I think we should particularly give a, a note of applause to these candidates for showing up candidates for some other positions I'm sure you've all seen on television who don't get to the substantive matters as well as these folks did and engage in a, such a nice civil conversation on such important topics. So why don't we give a, a vote of applause to everybody here. For showing some other folks how it's done. And I'll return you now to the Hadley Mothers Club. So uh, thank you for everybody that came, all the candidates. And Mary Jane Bacon, I was just trying to think how long you've been doing this for us. You know. It's been a long time. So um, also I just want to announce Hadley Mothers Club will be having our 11th annual recycling day, April 23rd. Um, it's a Saturday, and we're going to be at the Hadley Elementary School. And um, we have a really nifty website now, so you can go on there. It's HadleyMothersClub.org. If you go on there, you'll find a list of our um, fees for uh, recycling different items, and we'd love to see you there. And thank you very much, and thank you, Richard, for taping this this evening. And um, thank you, and everybody, please vote on April 12th. Thank you.